Good evening. I came across your channel and enjoy the stories that you share from your subscribers. I myself unfortunately have had a few terrifying true events happen to me and I've kept to myself over many many years for numerous reasons. So terrifying were these experiences that I was actually hesitant on even sending this email. They range from paranormal encounters to unexplainable sightings and almost being a homicide victim. Not once, but possibly twice in my lifetime. I'll share one story which I somehow believe was the gateway to the numerous supernatural and strange occurrences in my life, even to this day. If it gets your interest, let me know and I'll tell you more. When I was a young boy, probably around 8 or 9 years old, my family and I moved into this old creepy house that was built in the 1930s on a random cul-de-sac and at first glance from anywhere outside, it appeared to be a one-story home but it actually sat on top of a very creepy two-story underground basement. Yes, a two-story underground basement, one-story house. Weird, right? It gets weirder. Just wait. My family and I lived on the main level of the house. It had a nice sized kitchen, single car garage, big living room and long hallway leading to the bedrooms and bathroom, just like any typical one story house. What made this house so odd was in between the kitchen and the hallway entrance was a closet door that most people would assume was the pantry because of the small area in which it sat but it was actually the entrance to the basement. It literally sat in dead smack where the kitchen meets the hallway and there was nothing behind it. So at first glance it looked like it could be nothing more than a small storage area. Immediately when you opened the door you were met with a cold chill from the lack of insulation in the basement and you were greeted by an iron spiral staircase that descended into pure darkness until of course you pulled the light bulb string above your head to at least see a few steps down. To this day, I have never seen anything like this and even talking about it now in my 30s sends chills up my spine. As you went down the staircase, about 13 steps, you would finally get to a flat surface and a light switch that would light up the entire basement. With the light on, it wasn't creepy at first. There was a den area and a bedroom separated by drywall and under your feet the ground was made of concrete but had cheap carpet glued to it so even though it was chilly, it wasn't too bad. At least until you got to the second staircase. The second spiral staircase was located directly behind the first one where the drywall and carpet ended and also descended downward. However, at this staircase there wasn't another light bulb strained to pull until you got to the bottom. As if it wasn't already odd being in a hidden basement, this lower level was 13 more steps until the actual basement ended and there's a dirt floor where you're met by two small arched wooden doors at the bottom of the steps with stained glass built in. We call them the church doors, but I always got the uneasy feeling there that there was nothing holy about this hidden room whatsoever. When you open the very creepy old doors, there is just an empty room with concrete walls and more dirt floors. Nothing but a junk room, if you will. My stepdad used to call it that. I stayed away from it, except when I had friends over and wanted to creep them out, but the truth was, I was too terrified to go there by myself. But anyway, so here's when things got really weird. After living here for a while and avoiding the basement, or basements, I should say, my mother and stepfather were a little tight on cash while in between jobs, so they decided to rent out the rooms in our house to make ends meet, so they decided the basement would be the best option. We ended up renting the room below to a college couple who only stayed about a month or two before abruptly packing their things and leaving. Then again to a gentleman who was recently divorced and trying to get back on his feet. He also left abruptly within two months. This happened for about 8 months straight with each new renter leaving shortly after moving in and my family started to get frustrated because each time somebody left we would have to clean out small belongings they left behind and find somebody new to move in. This all changed when a young guy my stepdad worked with named James desperately wanted a place to stay. 
He was fresh out of jail and down on his luck, but was very respectful and a hard worker, just like my stepdad would say. I liked the guy immediately. He used to play video games with me and he helped me work on my jump shot in the driveway when him and my stepdad weren't at work. After about a month of staying with us, he asked my family what the lower room was for and if he could block off the steps to it with his dresser to keep the draft out. My family said yeah, so he did. A few days afterwards, at about 3 in the morning, the whole house awoke to a blood-curdling scream in the basement. It was James. My family and I ran for the kitchen where we saw James coming out from the basement with a terrified look on his face. My family kept asking if he was okay and he said that he woke up from a bad dream in the lower level of the basement laying on the dirt with the church door shut in the pitch black and it freaked him out. My mom asked him, but didn't you block off the steps going down there to keep the draft out? He said, yes ma'am, I did and my dresser was still blocking the steps, and that's when I came running back up, which is why I screamed. Immediately, I started to get scared, and I could see the fear in his eyes was also starting to concern my family as well. This was a guy who didn't seem to be afraid of anything, but whatever just happened under our house had immediately shaken terror in his body. He refused to go back downstairs, except during the daytime to grab some of his things and move out that same week. Before he left, I told him I wish he didn't have to leave us, and he said something that I'll never forget. Listen, kid, you're a cool dude, and so are your folks, but that basement is not a good place for anybody. Take care, kid. I found out years later that James had taken his life shortly after he left our house, and told people close to him that the reason he put the dresser in front of the second staircase was because he heard whispering coming from the lower level every night. No one of course believed him, even my family, but I do. Fast forward to when I was about 11 or 12, no one else ever stayed in the basement again and things were normal for the most part. However, we would still hear weird noises off and on downstairs. So, me and some gutsy friends decided to go and investigate and find out the history on it. After asking around and contacting the previous owners, we discovered that the house was supposedly built over an existing foundation in the 1930s, but had the spiral staircases added by a gentleman in the 1970s, whose daughter mysteriously vanished one afternoon on her way home from school. This information we found out sparked fear and curiosity in my friends and I and so we decided to get answers through an Ouija board that our buddy had bought from all places, Toys R Us. Bad, bad idea. Now, I work for a state highway department and we carry out a lot of different functions throughout our workday. It could be anything from plowing snow fixing holes in the road, to working wrecks that are often fatalities. But I'd like to tell you some stories that are just downright freaky, creepy, and weird. We'll start with the first time I ever had to plow snow in the middle of the night by myself. You see, the area that I work in is very rural, and the area that I always plow snow is about a 30 mile stretch of nothing, in between towns, where there's no street lights, and there's no homes. It was basically just pitch black for 30 miles through winding hills of mesquite trees and cedar plants. On this particular evening, a blizzard had rolled in, and we were fighting getting the snow off the road as best that we could. As I was only about 8 miles north of town, I looked ahead of me and this is where I can see what looks to be maybe 3 miles ahead of me, a pair of red taillights. Now, you gotta understand that you might not be able to see the very end of your truck, let alone that far ahead of you, when there's a blizzard. So when I saw these tail lights, I get excited because to me that means that the blizzard is letting up, and I'll be able to get this road cleared and get to go home. But something is pretty strange. The snow is still blowing and going around me. I just thought maybe the snow was blowing off the side of the road or from the ditches. So it must have stopped snowing and the wind is just blowing the snow around. 
So, as I'm driving, I'm focused on these tail lights that don't ever seem to get larger, but they also never move. All of a sudden, I turn this corner and come over the top of the hill, and down in the valley between two hills. I see what looks like a person standing in the middle of the road, but the thing is there's no distinguishable features, except for a pair of red glowing eyes and the blackest black outline shape I'd ever seen. Imagine a shadow of a man standing by themselves. It also seemed to be sucking all the light from my lights on my truck into it. Now to say I wasn't scared or something would be a lie. I felt this overwhelming oppression, like you know you did bad and your mom and dad already know about it and you're going to get it when you get home. So you just have this little ultimate worry, dread, absolute fear of what's about to happen. That's really the only way I can best describe this feeling. Basically, the only thing I could really do was just say a little prayer, and it went something along the lines of, Lord, this is beyond my comprehension, please take care of this. As soon as I said Amen, the figure shot straight up in the air quicker than I could see it. It was just gone, and the oppression was as well. All I could do at this point was turn my truck around and go back north, and I stayed up there towards daybreak. Then I came back and started working. As soon as daybreak hit, I was driving through there again. Is or was there an evil spirit lurking there while taking the lives of people? I don't know. To this day, I hate working in that one mile stretch of road. I'm fine either side of it, but right there? I absolutely dread working right there. My next story involves a ghost town. To be precise, it's a little town that sits on a state border, but I can't really reveal the name of this place or I'm going to get in trouble with my boss. But this little town has what are two residences and a bunch of abandoned buildings. It's through a major thoroughfare, so thousands upon thousands of travelers go through this area every single day. One day, while I was out there at this location by myself doing some work, my lunchtime had come up and I decided that I'm going to explore these abandoned buildings. At least one of them looked to have been explored already because they're covered in graffiti from travelers. I always find it interesting to read who's been through there, where they're from, etc. So I walk into this building and nothing exciting about it until I get to this back room. I get in there and there's women's underwear nailed to the wall and very ritualistic patterns, graphic adult themed pictures, and there's even notes handwritten that have all kinds of crazy things. Written on one of them says, gone out of a ticket, and it gives a date. Another says something about losing their virginity. However, the fact that it says to their brother is pretty disturbing to say the least. There are some more that are completely horrific, so I won't go into details about those. The only recourse I have is to contact a local state patrol and inform them that there's something very wrong going on here. They come in and they take pictures of it and they said that they're going to keep an eye on it, see what they can find out and whatnot. About three days later, I have to work over there again and I've got somebody working with me this time. I said, Dude, you have to check out this room. It's crazy. So we go to check this room out, and everything in this room is gone. Just up and disappeared. Crazy part is about two weeks after this, we see a new story on the local news that's talking about some guy further down the road, maybe 30 or 40 miles away, and everything was set up exactly the same, which is just really weird. What gets everything even stranger is that guy just took a bunch of pictures, and then went to the police department with said pictures. When the police went there to check it out, everything had been removed. Same guy, or maybe it was some other gal, or somebody. A few days later, I went to look at another facility, the Bandit Building just 20 miles further down the road. In that building, the exact same setup. Everything the exact same way. The panties, the pictures were hung up the same way, and the notes were hung identical to the previous two locations. As far as I know, nobody has ever been questioned, nor anything has really happened, and it remains a mystery to this day. 
I don't know if this location is still in that area and this room is still set up because it's far out of reach for me to drive out there to check it out and I really don't want to go out there to be honest. But some of the things written on those notes really messed with me for quite a while. They were dark things and if the statements written on them were true, it was just horrible. Here is my third story. This story has to deal with a completely abandoned and removed railroad line. Basically, it's a railroad that used to run through the area but has since been removed to this day. Railroad tracks tie the whole nine yards and the beds of the tracks still scar the land too. It's very visible and I've been plowing snow next to this area as early as 4.30, maybe 5 a.m. and the sun hasn't come up yet. This one day, as I'm driving along, I see a man walking along those tracks, at least where the tracks used to be. I really don't think anything of it. I just continue plowing and think, well, maybe it's a hitchhiker or something out there, whatever. As I get even with the man, he disappears, and the thing is, I don't think anything of it. After being awake for 48 hours, you get this, I don't give a flying you know what attitude towards everything. So that dude was cool as long as he didn't mess with me at a future time. So I finally finished my job and I went home not thinking anything about it until the next storm. You see, my shift leader, crew leader, crew chief, or whoever you want to call him, he's been working in the same area for the storm this whole time. When we got back to the barn, he begins to tell people about the man walking along the embankment and they just disappeared as he got close. He said that there's some dude over there who probably just built himself a little house and he's just living out there scrounging. I sit there and think about it and I say, you know what, I saw him last storm too. He just walked along and as soon as he got to this point, he just disappeared. So basically, the crew leader and I decided to hop into a state pickup and drive over there and see if we can find this guy because it's pretty cold out there. It was pretty nasty out here too, so we figured we might be able to get this guy a hotel room, or maybe get him the help that he needs, and maybe he's not living in a hole or tent on the other side of the embankment, at least we hope not. So we're out there, we're walking around trying to find just his footprints, but there are none whatsoever. There's about a foot of snow on this thing, and there's not a single footprint in the snow. Now, my crew leaders know I saw him walking up there. But then the snow clears, and there's nothing. No one's ever walked through here. At this moment, we get this very eerie feeling, like we're being watched from somewhere, and we shouldn't be there. As we turn around, there's this dude standing there, but we can see very clearly as he's wearing one of those Chinaman hats, and they do look to be of Chinese descent. However, he just sits there and looks at us a little bit and then they just disappear right in front of us. So we started doing some research. It turns out that the Chinese had helped build all these railroads and stuff, but we didn't know it was in this particular area. You see, it turned out that there was a story about how a Chinese immigrant had been accused of kidnapping and sexually, forcefully, and violently having his way with a local farmer girl, and that the townspeople had round him up and shot him and then buried him somewhere along the train tracks, right where they had been working. Of course, there were also points in the story saying that the girl made things up just to get the poor man murdered, because she had gotten pregnant from her actual man, and didn't want the pregnancy. So the blame was put on him, saying that he had his way with her, and that's how she got pregnant. Quite sad if that's the case. Honestly, we believe that his soul is looking for justice, so when we go there, we usually bring ourselves an extra sandwich and leave it there as some sort of weird offering, but we never worry about anything while there while we're working. In fact, we all prefer to take lunch there than anywhere else. I suppose if these things pique your interest, I will tell you more stories and some of the more creepier things that I've experienced, like digging for bodies or working fatalities. As you can probably already tell, we lead an interesting life, that's for sure. Hey creepy fox, 
I've been listening to the stories that you share from your subscribers on YouTube for quite a while now, and I thought I should share a couple of experiences that I've had with you. They are true stories, and while they aren't anything crazy, they are still pretty bizarre. This is the first story. My friends told me about this place near where we lived simply called Quest Haven. Sounds like a name right out of a book, right? And the stories along with it are just as cliché. There are the typical rumors about the whole road and area around being haunted by some ghost lady, and I think some creature even. But one of the weirdest things is that there is this weird church out there. Some people say it's a cult of some sort. The website for the church seems normal enough, but the whole place is just really weird. A quick layout of the area. There is a main two-lane road that leads into it and then ends in a small dead route. At the route, there is a blocked dirt road that apparently leads somewhere and spills out, but you can't drive out there due to it being blocked. I don't know anything about the dirt road and I have no desire to find out whatsoever. So my friends and I went driving down to Quest Haven via the main road. It was a beautiful area really. The road leads in the middle of nowhere full of hilly woods and brush. It's totally dark with no lights at all other than the occasional lamp or something at an occasional driveway. One driveway had this huge weird looking statue out front that honestly freaked us out because it just pops up from around the corner it's right there at the edge of the road. So anyway we keep driving and everybody is already on the edge. The stories, while cliché as they seemed, fit in way too perfectly with the setting. Middle of nowhere, pitch blackout, and then we get to the end of the main road. Like it said, it's just at the end of the big turnaround with the church up a ways and then closed off the first road. Now here's the weird thing. The church is totally gated and closed off and guarded by security. So some people say it's built on the foundations of an old mental hospital, but not sure if that's true. But it is really weird. So we sat there in our car looking around for a little while when suddenly spotlights flood the driveway and we see a guy walking down. This was enough and we ended up hightailing it out of there. So not too crazy, but definitely a weird place. Here is my second story. There are two parts. The first part is from what my friends told me about their experience, and the second part is when I went with them the second time. So again, a bit of backstory and layout. This place is called Proctor Valley Road. Apart from it being right near the border of the US and Mexico and being a known spot for drug cartel activity and Norse patrol patrolling, there are a lot of stories with it. There is some supposed minotaur-like creature that eats people, a ghost lady who waves down your car and asks for a ride and kills you whether or not you give her a ride, a demon car that is really only headlights that will chase you though not do anything really and then just some other random occurrences. It starts out on one end from a series of empty back streets, and then just turns into a total void and empty really bumpy dirt road. It goes on for miles and abruptly ends on a very nice paved road near a housing development. So the first time we were going to go, I wasn't feeling great and cancelled, but my friends went anyway. That is what they told me about what went on. On their drive through, they suddenly saw headlights approaching fast. Of course, their first thought was the demon car I mentioned, but what freaked them out is that all they could see were headlights. Now again, a middle of nowhere dirt road and it's pitch black. The car had its brights on, they think, so it makes sense that if it was a black car or something, that they couldn't see anything. It was tailgating them for a while, and you can't drive fast on this road unless maybe you have a good off-road vehicle. So they just stayed calm and finally the car swerved around them and went past them. Again, they couldn't see a car at all. They saw the headlights and taillights. No plates or anything. Just lights. Cartel stuff? Border patrol? Who knows? But they were pretty shaken up about it. So, about a week later, we decided to go again. I had to see this place for myself. So again, we drive down there and end up in the back roads and thinning out neighborhoods when suddenly we hit the first road and here we are. It's super bumpy and we have no choice really but to crawl along at about 10 to 15 miles an hour 
so we can avoid any damage to the car, or worse, ourselves. Now once we get into the road, my friend's girlfriend just bursts into tears. She starts hyperventilating and freaking out. For some reason, she is just scared out of her mind, and she won't talk to us whatsoever, as she's just crying. Now she's very tough, an intimidating woman to be honest. She's not the kind of person to get scared or back down from anything easily. Not now, as she was reduced to nothing but tears, sobs, and gasps for breath. Our other friend was in the back with her and was doing his best to comfort her, and my friend driving just got us out of there as fast as he could. We ended up passing another car going the opposite way, but about halfway I suddenly had this horrible feeling of anxiety, like something was not right at all. My friend's girlfriend was still crying hysterically, and my friend frankly just looked annoyed and wanted to leave. At one point I believe we were having trouble getting up a hill and not getting really any good traction. My friend put the car in park and was saying he was going to get out and see if he could get us some traction. By this point not only was his girlfriend still crying, I was now having a horrible gut feeling. Something wasn't right and I almost felt like something was watching us. Not someone, but something. I just felt this unnatural presence and I was freaked out. I told my friend to just stay in the car and keep trying and eventually we did get moving again. Luckily, we didn't have many more issues with traction, though the first road was not very forgiving. Finally, we saw the little light ahead of that neighborhood I mentioned earlier, and I felt relief. As soon as we were back on the regular road, my friend's girlfriend finally calmed down, but she still would not say a single word the rest of the ride. I used to think it would be fun to go back there, but over time, the more I think about it, and remember the awful feeling I had and how my friend's girlfriend reacted, I'd say it's better to just leave it alone. The cartels and the border patrol can have their own fun down there, but whatever I experienced was nothing to do with them whatsoever. Again, just to summarize, this is something entirely unnatural. I grew up in Bangor, California, and it's here I always heard the same ghost story. It became a sort of urban legend from our town of 665 people. From 2006 to 2009, our fire station was haunted. The firefighters all insisted on the presence of a wailing spirit. It would lock the firefighters in rooms alone and screech a deafening sound at the helpless workers. This lasted for years, until the station workers refused to ever enter a room alone, as that is when it usually struck. In 2009, the station was torn down, and ever since then, the Bangor Banshee has been heard in our hills at night. Now, being a local having lived in Bangor my whole life, I had long since ignored this spirit as a tall tale. That is until a couple of months ago. You see, I was at a friend's house a town over and I found myself driving home at 2am alone down our unlit highway, it being the start of summer and my old Honda missing air conditioning. I left my windows open for the drive and that's when I heard it. A scream. It doesn't quite sum up my feeling, but it sounded so loud and inconsistent, sort of like a hundred simultaneous blood curdling screams behind, in front, all around me, and this is when I saw a dark figure on the side of the road at the corner of my eye as well. In a moment of panic, I slammed the gas and the sound disappeared after a few moments. I haven't driven on that road at night since then, and I still get an eerie feeling on my commute to work each and every morning. Okay, so this happened a few years ago in my home state of Ohio in Ross County at a well-known ghost spot known as Elizabeth's Grave. Legend says that if you move Elizabeth's stone to the front of the cemetery, it will return to the tree where she hung herself. A ghostly woman has been seen hanging from a tree and are walking among the stones, followed by two dark, cloaked figures. Now, we are huge fans of the paranormal me aged only 15 or 16, and my brother, who in this story we will call Mike, aged 18 at the time, and his friend, who we will call Edward, 
age 20. So me, Mike, and Edward went down there one night and we of course being the paranormal freaks we were, we decided to move her stone and we waited about 5 minutes and these what I assume to be drunk morons pull up and start spouting that this is their land and we weren't allowed to be there. We knew darn well it was public land. There's a field next to it where we went pheasant hunting. So we all told them to screw off and they didn't take too kindly to that as they then just peeled out of there. We waited 15 more minutes to no avail so we got everything and we got in the car. However, we didn't even get to the car and we all heard in a female's voice saying, Go away. And then the passenger window of my brother's car explodes inwards, effectively spraying glass all over the interior of the vehicle. We got out of there as fast as possible and then we went back the next morning and wouldn't you know, the stone was gone and it was now under the tree again. Fast forward to about two to three weeks later, we were at a party and Edward's phone, S6 Edge or S7 Edge, I don't quite remember which one it was, was in the kitchen away from everybody else and we all hear from the kitchen the same girl's voice from the cemetery as she says, I will never forgive you and we all run into the kitchen and it's empty. No one's in there. Edward's phone is on the counter with the voice command on and we see it and his phone just shuts off. His phone never worked again and he got rid of that phone right after that and although this is one of my worst experiences, it hasn't discouraged me from investigating the paranormal any further, just never to that spot ever again. Hey, I'm 19 years old and English is not my first language, so pardon me if I have some mistakes here and there. You can call me M if you want. However, I wouldn't say that I have so many experiences with ghosts, except the time when you wake up and you just can't move your whole body, but you're still awake and you feel the pressure and presence of something else. This is my unexplained story. I will let you decide if it's a ghost or something else, and if somebody knows what it is, please let me know in the comments section. My first encounter with a ghost was about a year ago. I was in my room and locked myself in my room, which has a private bathroom in it, and like any standard room, it has a bed, however I didn't like mine that much. I would always sleep on the floor instead and stay up all night playing video games on my laptop. One night I was lying on the ground, while my whole family was asleep on the third floor. My room is on the second, and the kitchen is on the first. At around 2 a.m., the chandelier in the living room next to my room fell on the ground and made a huge bomb-like sound, and it freaked me out big time. Now, the problem was that I'm the only one who heard it, and my parents didn't wake up, nor my sisters. I came back to my room after checking the whole kitchen floor, and I decided to go asleep in the floor like I usually do. I eventually went to sleep, but then suddenly something woke me up, and I wasn't freaking out. It was warm and peaceful. It felt like it held me up and took me to bed and told me it's better to sleep there instead. However, I couldn't see a face nor a shape. It was just there, and I felt it and heard it. The second encounter was two days ago from today, January 30th, 2017. Now, I woke up one morning to take my sisters to school. Then I came back to my home at around 8.30 a.m., as I usually wake up at 9.30 a.m. to get ready to go to my language school. That day I came back at 8.30 a.m., then I decided to take a nap for 30 minutes or so. Thus I slept for like an hour or so, and then something woke me up again. This is the second encounter, and at first I thought that it was my dad. So I said, Dad, is that you? It answered me with a laugh and said, No. I wasn't able to move my body while this was said. All of a sudden, it was gone, and I was finally able to move again. So, I stood up and started looking around in my room, but there was now nothing. I was thinking to try to talk to what I saw, but I didn't. Now, that's all I have, and I really wish somebody who is listening to this can tell me what it was, or what I should do. Please help if you can. Also, I forgot to mention that the two encounters happened in two different houses, in two different countries. 
so feel free to comment, I'll be looking for answers. Edit. It took me about a year and a half to gather the courage to send this because I don't know what the answers to my story will be and if what I feel is dangerous, or maybe it's not. Who knows? Maybe it's better not knowing the truth. P.S. Now I live in a small country in Europe. It's very quiet here. I keep feeling that whatever I encountered back then ended up coming with me. When I was in my last year of college, I was living with my boyfriend. He was the kind of person that would give anyone the shirt off his back if they asked for it. We would always enjoy drives through the countryside back when gas was literally under a dollar a gallon. That kind of gives away my age, but whatever. The roads were usually two lane highways that wound through forested areas, broken up by crops and cattle pastures. There are a lot of small rivers and creeks in that area, so there are also some really neat looking bridges. Some are made of wood, and the big ones on the highway are concrete with steel. They would usually parallel with railroad bridges, which are steel and iron frames. Normally, we would get back to our apartment before it got really dark. There was a beautiful place near where we lived, however, that had the best view of the sunset. This one night, I don't remember why we were out so late, but we were. The highway we were on had no street lights and the houses were few and far between. It was roughly about 9.30 p.m. and it was really dark outside. We are passing over a dark bridge that traverses a small river about 20 feet down. As we get to the crest of this bridge, we noticed a figure walking along the shoulder, which was really narrow. The figure was wearing all white and seemed to have a slight glow to them. The hair on the back of my neck stood up as the car slowed down. I could now see long black hair that fell to the figure's mid-back. I was shaking my head no as my boyfriend said he was going to stop and offer her a ride. I couldn't explain why I was feeling so terrified until we rolled past her and my boyfriend started to back up. In the light of the reverse lights, I can see in the passenger side mirror that this figure has no face whatsoever. I shouted and I guess my boyfriend could tell that something wasn't right because he threw the car in gear and sped off. It took me a while to stop crying and hyperventilating to explain to my boyfriend that the woman had no face. At the time, we thought that we had seen a ghost of some kind, but it wasn't until a few years later that a friend of ours told us the legend of La Llorona. Hello, I'm not sure what this would be classified as, but it's a story I think about often when I'm sitting at home alone. Not too many years ago, my now deceased grandmother was in the hospital. I had gone home because visiting hours were over for that evening. My mother had also been home that night. She was in the far back of the house where my grandmother's room was. She was working on getting it ready for my grandmother's return home. Meanwhile, I was in the front part of the house with my bedroom door wide open. My bedroom was right off this side of the living room. I was lounging on my bed staring off into space in the direction of a dark living room. Now the thing is, I had heard heavy footsteps coming from the hall that started to just go past my door and sounded like they were getting gradually closer. There was a light coming from further down the hall, so I paid attention to see if I could see any kind of shadow, or maybe perhaps it was my mother. No shadow ever came by, and my mother never walked by either, but the steps got louder until they reached my open door. I called out to my mom and wasn't met with an answer whatsoever. At this point, I was sitting up in my bed trying to get a better look without fully getting up yet, but still nothing. I was, however, curious. I now got up to see if my mother was on this side of the house, and maybe I didn't see her. I then went to my grandma's room, and there she was folding clothes on the bed. She didn't hear me walk in, and I startled her when she saw me. She yelled at me and told me to make some sort of noise when I came down the hallway. I'm notorious in my family for having quiet footsteps. I apologized and asked her if she was out in the living room. She said no and asked me why. I told her what I heard and she told me to stop trying to scare her. I said I wasn't trying to scare her and that's what I heard. We kind of brushed it off in the moment but it wasn't the first thing like that that had happened in this house and it didn't happen just to me. My old roommate, 
slash ex-bestie and her boyfriend would tell me that they would see figures standing in doorways or even sometimes hear people talking when there was nobody else in the home and it would really rattle them. There had been a handful of times when I was home and everybody was asleep or I was alone when I'd be relaxing in a nice hot bath and I'd start to hear humming and it would gradually get louder as if somebody was right outside the door. I'd brush it off as the TV thinking that somebody had gotten up or somebody had just come home and decided to turn on the tube but there was never the TV on. There have been nights where it's been cool enough to sleep with the window open and I'd hear odd noises outside like your stereotypical scary noises, laughing, baby cries. I've even heard the occasional, hey, or heard my name being called. I'd be that fool that would go out and see what it was, and it was never anything. Keep in mind, I live pretty far off the main road. My sister, who lived in this house on and off throughout the years, would be terrified of staying home alone. When my mother or I would get home, all the lights in the house would be on, and my sister would lock herself in her room. I always thought it was a bit much. Even my boyfriend claims to have seen something, and he's not really prone to accepting this kind of thing. He's very skeptical. Anyway, one evening while we were chilling on the couch watching movies, I had gotten up to take the dogs outside. I went out the front door which you can see from the couch. I was outside maybe 5-7 to seven minutes, not very long, just long enough for the dogs to do their business. I walked back inside and his head snapped at me. He said that that was quick, did you walk around the house? I said no, I was out in the front of the house the whole time. He had a very confused look on his face and said that he had just seen me come in and walk into the hall and that I didn't say anything to him. I didn't know what to make of it, so I just sat down. Not gonna lie, he looked pretty bothered by it, but I didn't say anything else about it whatsoever. It could be nothing, but I don't sleep with my windows open anymore unless my boyfriend is here with me and I limit my late night bath sessions for when somebody else is awake. So I guess my question to all of you is, what do all of you think about this? It would be great to hear your answers. Hey everyone, so that was the last story for today's episode. Something a little bit different. Um, as you know, I normally try to do uh, things that are based off, uh, you know, encounters with scary people and creepy people. But I wanted to go ahead and mix things up and kind of give you guys something with the unexplained and paranormal. Originally, I was going to save this episode for the next week, for October. Uh, but I kind of figured, you know what, I didn't really have anything else planned this week, as I don't really have any stories um, other than these uh, paranormal and unexplained stories. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get you guys this episode. So that's why you guys got this episode uh, this week. As for the next upload that is going up on the 1st of October, that is going to be a huge mega Halloween episode. And basically that's going to be a remaster of a bunch of Halloween stories that we've covered uh, the previous years here on the channel. And basically I'm doing that um, to uh, get that out to people that are brand new to the channel. One of the cool things is finally for the first time in 2022, the channel is actually starting to grow. Um, I've been stuck at uh, 96, 200 for since the beginning of the year, and just uh, this August, I started to, you know, see, you know, uh, the channel is actually kind of starting to get pushed out more, which is great. Videos are starting to get viewed a little bit more, and now we're almost at 96, 600 subs. So that's pretty awesome to see. You know, finally, there's some sort of growth. Um, and one thing I've been told is, you know, making these big episodes is what really helps push out your channel because it has a higher chance of appearing in the search when people search these certain topics. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be putting out that Halloween compilation episode. Um, please, you know, just like I've said in the other episodes, uh, please make sure to send in any scary stories that you wanted to share. Uh, I am looking for Halloween stories. So as you'll hear the stories on the Halloween compilation, basically looking for stories like that. It can involve trick-or-treating, it can involve a Halloween party, 
It can involve maybe something that happened a couple days before Halloween, basically just around that Halloween um, holiday if you guys have that to make sure to send it in. So that way I'm not just doing a Halloween compilation. You guys are actually getting a Halloween episode, which would be great. And as for the rest of the month of October, um, again, that just depends on the story submissions I get. I would like to do some more paranormal stories like this episode. Uh, since normally I don't really do the unexplained and paranormal stories until October. So again, um, now would be an excellent time to send in your paranormal and unexplained stories. If you do have them, then we'll go ahead and do more of those episodes. Um, but yeah, um, that was really the only update I wanted to give you all. Um, it's been a little bit slow. It did slow down a little bit for the month of September. But like I said, I want to pick it up again for October and for November and December. Usually, you know, this is when I notice that the viewership kind of tends to come back. Uh, this is usually when subscribers usually come back to look for scary stories. So I welcome you all with open arms, just like I have all the time. Um, do go back and check out any videos you might have missed. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and include the regular outro. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening to this. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment telling me what you all thought. And subscribe and turn on notifications if you're brand new. Also, make sure to check out our song, Make a Start. You can find it on Apple Music, Spotify, or even here on YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel and check it out underneath the Creepy Fox topic section. Also, consider grabbing some Creepy Fox merchandise, which you can see right below the video. And if you want early access to brand new videos with no advertisements, as well as exclusive narration videos not available to anyone else, consider becoming a channel member. Which, speaking of, I'd like to go ahead and give them all a shout out. Thank you to Robbie, Bo, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Scott, Sean, Corey, Linz, Maribel, Medu Satil, and our newest member, Silent. Thank you also to the regular viewers who watch the uploads, like, comment, and share them with their family and friends. I appreciate and love every single one of you. Thanks once again for stopping by, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Take care, and have yourself an amazing day.